So how does an astronaut end up at a movie like Oblivion? Well, my opportunity for Oblivion came from someone who actually is in the industry, works in the art department, because I had consulted on a prior movie, which I in turn was connected to through some of my aerospace connections, a company I actually do test flying for out in Mojave. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's just like anything, a little bit of networking, and uh, ended up this movie could have really used the yeah. expertise from an astronaut, and I was invited in to help. And can you talk a little bit about meeting Tom Cruise for the first time? How sure. Was that? Oh, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, it was on set, the rehearsal, the night before they seen, filmed the scenes in Odyssey. And uh, it was myself, Tom, Andrea, his co-star, and a couple of script folks, assistants, to jot down notes as we made changes and adjustments. And we basically flowed through all of those elements when they're flying. They're trying to escape from the Tet, so they're flying doing astronaut stuff. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Tom had me explain some of the, I had consulted on the script before, so a lot of the changes were my inputs, and he had me explain to him, well, why this here, why that, what are we doing here, what would I be looking at there, and, you know, all of those technical elements. And then, um, you know, the wheels were turning in his brain right from the start, how did he tie those technical inputs in with how he wanted to propel the story forward and to the actor stuff, mm -hmm. and coaching Andrew along the way. And, of course, Tom's a pilot as well, so he got the whole crew pilot thing right from the start, and he coached Andrea on that, and they, they made a great crew. And to talk a little bit about your career, like how, how did you, or when did you decide that you wanted to become an astronaut? Oh, I was probably six or seven. I, mean, it was, I grew up with Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, 13 years old, first time uh, we set foot on the moon. Uh, my father was a pilot in the U.S. Air Force, mm -hmm. so I grew up around that. I always wanted to do it, and I yeah. decided I wanted to go to the U.S. Air Force Academy when I was uh, in junior high school, and just I just stuck to my dream, and I was fortunate enough to... But you've been on, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, three space uh, shuttle missions? Correct, yeah. Uh, yeah. How is that to see the Earth from, you know... Oh, stunningly beautiful. I'm so jealous. And, <laughs> and, well, and as, <laughs> as magnificent and wonderful as a visual feast that Oblivion was, and it's... I mean, perhaps the best movie I've ever seen in that visual because it's just stunning. Yeah. Um, it does not compare to seeing the Earth with your real eyeball from space, which I wish every human could have that experience because yeah. it is really life-changing. Yeah. Is it really, is that how you expected it to be? Because you always wanted to become an astronaut right. and then you see it. Was it It was even you... better than I expected. Let's and see. prior to that, or really prior to the training and having other veteran astronauts tell me, oh, Rick, you get there, the best part of it's going to be seeing the planet. Yeah. I didn't necessarily think of that component. For me, it was about, hey, I'm going to get to fly the space shuttle, be a pilot astronaut, and so forth. But then the experience itself, the best part of it for me was the visual. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was there any, like, ever anything borderline scary that happened in space? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Can you I mean, elaborate on that? Well, my second mission on Ascent, I mean, I'm here I am weighing three times my normal weight. We're about 45 seconds away from main engines cut off and the, we had a hydraulic system failure, so the alarm goes off, which is kind of scary in and of itself, you know. But I had done the procedure hundreds of times before in the simulator. The ground just called for me to do this leak isolation procedure, and I just did it. And it wasn't until after we got to main engine cutoff and things kind of calmed down and much less dynamic that I go, oh, this was the real deal. This was not the simulator Gosh. today. Thank goodness for all that training, you know. Did you think you were going to die at one point? No. Well, no. I mean, during during the procedure, and, and it's the system, they have three hydraulic systems on the shuttle. It'll fly fine on two. I mean, you're down your redundancy, but there was no immediate threat of that. But it is a very significant emergency. Yeah. But in the heat of it, you're just you're just doing what you're trained to do. you yeah. got to focus on that, you know. That's after the fact. You think, okay, you know. If I'd have screwed it up, then I might have died. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, so. uh, you know, as a kid, I always dreamt of becoming an astronaut. I know it's, it's kind of cheesy. I didn't no, make it. No, 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 I became yeah. a journalist. <laughs> um, do, you, do you have, like, any advice for kids or, you know, people that have a dream like that that want to become an astronaut? Well, the first advice I would give anyone, and it's the same advice I gave my daughters, three daughters, is find your passion, find your dream, and go for that. And for some people, it will be to be an astronaut, and they're willing to make the sacrifices and do what they can and do their very best to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, my oldest daughter, I mean, her dream from the time she was tiny was ballet. I mean, she loved ballet, and she stuck with it, and she ended up becoming a professional ballet dancer. Mm -hmm. So a different dream, but she had the focus and intensity. In our family, she's kind of known as the female version of me with the intensity and focus, <laughs> and it served her well for her dream. Uh, so that's what I would tell kids. Yeah. Know. 
Well, that's great. Very nice meeting you. Yeah, it's likewise. an honor. Thanks. All right.